Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big J TV. Like, comment, of course, subscribe. Let's talk about it. Woo, let's talk about it. So, Jason Fetlock, of course, he had to release another full two hour podcast about Deion Sanders after the Colorado Buffs lost to Washington State, securing their spot as the worst team in the Pac 12. And they're going to play Utah next, I think it's Saturday. And um, Utah is actually not a bad team. Utah came off a bad loss recently. And um, Fat Locker is predicting that they're going to go for an eight, meaning they're going to lose their last game. Now, let me say this, right? As much as I've been going off on Fat Lock and disrespecting him, I w- when he's right... He's right about things. You know what I mean? He was right about Coach Prime's ego and Coach Prime losing the locker room. Deion Sanders has lost the locker room, especially in that game versus Washington State. I talked about it on my on on my um on my um, on my recent videos. And I recognize that. I'm not blind. You know what I mean? I watch football, I know football. And I also understand that. You know, Coach Prime did get a lot of media bandwagon, got a lot of boosting from the beginning of the season. Keep in mind, the Colorado Buffs were winning tight games and they were winning them against teams that they were not favored against. You know what I mean? The Colorado Buffs beginning of the season was fantastic. But the media did their thing and they boosted them to a level where they made it seem like the you know buffaloes were already there meaning that the buffs were already a you know playoff team or at least a contender to win the pac 12. i didn't like that i didn't like that i was skeptical at times but even sometimes i fell in the bandwagon a little bit the problem with jason whitlock though and i've called it out from the beginning is that jason is a hypocrite condescending disrespectful and a hypocrite when it comes to Deion Sanders and I'm gonna keep saying it and keep saying it and keep saying it perfect example he called Deion Sanders the Jim Jones of football the Jim Jones the black Jim Jones essentially who's selling his players and the public Kool-Aid that's poison filled and will kill them He's more Jim Jones than Nick Saban. The stupidity in that analogy goes beyond bounds. Here's the thing about Jason Whitlock. For when he's right, he's almost equally and sometimes double or triple times wrong and stupid. Okay. A few years ago, he predicted that Joe Burrow was the new Cam Newton. All flash and no results. Come to find out less than... Two years later, it's almost a consensus that Joe Burrow is probably the number two, maybe number three quarterback in the entire league. Okay? Literally. (laughs) You know, Jason Whitlock is the same dude who said that Shannon Sharp leaving undisputed will destroy him. Now, look at, you know, Fatlock, what he's saying now about Shannon Sharp. Even Fatlock had to admit. In this week's episode, one of these week's episodes, the Shannon Sharp has actually surpassed Undisputed, has surpassed Skip Bayless, and Shannon Sharp is actually doing doing the right thing by doubling down on his YouTube with Nightcap, with Unk and, uh, and Ocho, and doing a great job on Club Shay Shay, and obviously doing a good job on ESPN. So Fat Lock is wrong again, right? The only time he was kind of right was about how the media hype on Deion Sanders has gotten to his head and ruined the locker room in Colorado. Okay, congratulations. Do you want a cookie, you fat bastard? He's a fat bastard. He's a hypocritical fat bastard. And for him to question, you know, Deion Sanders' religion, or at least his Christianity, is so hypocritical and dumb when Jason Whitlock himself has been a Christian for less than a year. And now he thinks he's more pious and more sanctimonious than Deion Sanders. He's there willing to judge Deion Sanders' relationship with God because Deion Sanders listens to rap music. Like, how disgusting is this person? 
See, what Jason Whitlock is, he's one of them people, right, that tells you about the speck in your eye, and he doesn't notice the rod in his entire forehead. He's one of those people who's so quick to denigrate and put down black people. And when I say black people, more specifically black men, <laughs> let's be real, he's ready to denigrate and put down black men for his overwatchers and on people who pay his bills than anybody else. See, every single criticism he has for Deion Sanders, including idolatry, including, you know, uh, uh, a me, me, arrogant, you know, overcompensating, rude, a fake Christian attitude, he could attribute all of that to Donald Trump. Every criticism he has for Deion Sanders, he could say that to, about Donald Trump. But why won't he say that about Donald Trump? He works for the Blaze Media. That's his bottom line. Those are the people who, ca who sign his checks. <laughs> Blaze Media is a conservative network. Okay? If he was consistent with his worldview, okay? And his criticisms for Coach Brian, he would be a fan of DeSantis. <laughs> he would be one telling his people to vote for Vivek or Nikki Haley. But this idiot is still on the Trump train because he believes that that's the only way he's going to get paid. And he's right, though. That's the only way he will get paid because if he criticizes, uh, you know, Donald Trump even a little bit, he's going to get his ass off blaze media right away he will not get paid now why do i say this because he had a co-host and contributor on his show called bryson gray who gave the same criticisms to donald trump and in less than two weeks when bryson gray started to say that bryson gray was taken off uh, fearless and the irony of that he has a whole show called fearless but he is fearful to even criticize Donald Trump even a little bit. And I'm saying this again. It's not a problem to criticize black people. It's not a problem to criticize, uh, you know, Deion Sanders. It's not a problem. It's actually good because criticism actually usually constructs and makes people better. I have no problem with that. But it's the spirit of it, the inconsistency of it, the arrogance of it that makes me mad. Paul Feinbaum has criticized Deion Sanders. Paul Feinbaum, when the Colorado Buffs were going on three game winning streaks, he said, this is not a playoff team. This is a team that might be bowl eligible. That's maybe going to win six games. And Paul Feinbaum was right. So was Joe Klatt. Joe Klatt had similar criticisms, right? And these are guys who watch college football all the time and understand that building a program is more than a one-year commitment. See, the pathetic thing about this guy, <laughs> Jason Fatlock, is that instead of focusing on so many shows about Prime, why doesn't he co focus on uh, Marcus Freeman, the coach of Notre Dame, who has actually made the program really, really good with Sam Hartman as the quarterback, but has slowly started to disappoint with his recent losses, especially his loss versus Clemson last week, right? But Jason Fatlock won't focus on that because I'll tell you again, Jason Fatlock is obsessed, insecure, jealous, and hateful towards Deion Sanders, towards Coach Prime, and he will not hide his insecurity he will not hide his hatred, he won't hide his envy, and he won't hide his disdain for a man, a black man who's in his mid-50s, Deion Sanders, who's raising his boys, he's trying to do the right thing, and aiming to uplift young black men and white people, and be build a program that has been absolute dog crap for 20-some years. Let me tell you something, man. Next season, I have a prediction. I think that... Uh, you know, the Colorado Buffs are going to compete for a bowl game. They're going to get seven wins. And if I'm wrong, I want y'all to come on this uh, video and roast me as hard as you can. But if I'm right, I need your punk asses to come back here and humble yourself and tell me, yo, Jay, you was right. 
Big J TV, man. Check out the videos on the end screen, man. Let me know what y'all think. I'm out.